Sophie here. So today I am going to show you, by popular demand, how to make a spray hand sanitizer. Okay, so for those of you who missed it last week, I showed you how to make your own hand sanitizing wipes. So if you haven't seen that video, please go and look at that video. But a lot of you have asked me to show you how to make a spray as well. So this is a really potent anti uh, bacterial antiviral spray following all the guidelines that we need to follow with the best science available in terms of a spray that will really um, help protect you against these pesky viruses that are flying around at the moment. Now, um, because some of you have been going, Sophie, ah, I didn't get that video, I didn't see it, it didn't pop up in my, in my feed. Do make sure when you subscribe to my channel that you click on that little, ye oh, I was going to say yellow, gray bell icon. It should be right next door to the, uh, where it says subscribe. Make sure you click on it so that it's got these two little lines around it. And that means that you will get notified when you get a brand new video in from me. And if you look at videos on your phone, then you just have to go into your phone and check the settings that you're, um, you know, allowing it. The, the notifications are switched on for YouTube videos. So I just wanted to tell you that because I've had so many emails saying I never got that um, you that you know I never knew about that video you did on the hand wipes so let's get straight into it let's not waste any time and I'm going to talk you through it really simply and quickly so that you can make at home for you and your loved ones and I really do recommend you make as many of them as possible um, of these potent hand sanitizers Okay, so let's get going with this really simple DIY. The first thing that you need to do is to sterilize really well, uh, really whenever you're doing uh, skincare DIY, but particularly we're obviously dealing with sanitizing products. You do this very, very simply by taking what I do anyway. So I take a glass bowl and I get a tea kettle uh, full of water that is just it's kind of boiling as I take it off and you pour it over. You're obviously gonna to have to be very careful with things that are plastic, like little plastic droppers if you're using because you don't want them to melt. So those you would just dip in and out quite quickly of that super duper hot water. So I like to do my measuring spoons and uh, and, and everything um, like that to just to make sure that we're, we're really uh, as sterile as we can be. Now, for this DIY, I am using these little uh, glass bottles that I've just sterilized. You can find them on Amazon. I'll put a link underneath the video where you can find them. Uh, you can get one ounce uh, or two ounce or even four ounce, totally up to you. But I recommend um, that if you, you know, you're going to make a bunch of these, which would be a really good idea, get, uh, get a few of these because they're always, always going to be useful to you. Okay, so and that's that. Now you obviously, when you have your glass bottles, you're going to want to get the ones that come with the sprayer top. Again, uh, I will link to that. So that is the first thing. Now, here's how we are going to make our sanitizer. So I have a glass measuring jug right here. Now, the prime ingredient that I'm going to use is uh, isopropyl uh, rubbing alcohol. Now, it can be difficult to find this alcohol um, because the stores are running out in times of a you know virus or a crisis. That tends to be what happens. Now, you can get either 70 or 90. I wrote 90 here because I want to be really clear that you can use either. If you have a choice, get 90. If you can't get 90%, just get your 70%. I'm going to link underneath the video to uh, somewhere that actually does carry the 90% uh, rubbing alcohol right now. And hopefully by the time you see this video, they'll still carry it. Um, so that's what you need. So what we're going to do is we are going to take uh, one cup of this. Now, when I used to make hand sanitizer, some of my older recipes say that you could use 
uh, vodka. But the problem with vodka is a lot of vodka, in fact, most vodka is only 40% alcohol, 40% proof. So that is not going to work. So I am updating and amending that piece of information if we really want to stick to what is going to scientifically work here. Now, the next ingredient that we're using is hydrogen peroxide, which you should be able to find at any drugstore, right? So we're going to take that and we're going to put one tablespoon of uh, hydrogen peroxide into my mixture here. Now, that is going to be extremely drying in of itself. So you can either add some vegetable glycerin or you can add aloe vera gel. So really, I would just say whatever is available to you. Um, I think I'm going to add in this mixture, I'm going to add a little bit of vegetable glycerin. So just one teaspoon. You don't want too much because you don't want it getting sticky and um, gumming up the, the, the little sprayers because you've got these tiny little sprayers. So that's important. Now to this, I am adding one third of a cup of water that is sterilized, meaning it was just the boiled water from the tea kettle that I've left to cool down. So I've got a third of a cup uh, there. Now I'm going to just say one little thing here, and I'll put this in the recipe underneath. If you're using 90% um, alcohol, then you would put in a touch more, you're putting quarter of a cup. Okay, great. So you're with me so far. Now we're going to add some essential oils. Now <laughs> they're not essential to this recipe. You could get by with this, but I love essential oils because they naturally are antibacterial, antiviral. They're going to make this spray smell so amazing. They're soothing, they're therapeutic. So I'm bringing them on. But again, you don't have to, and you don't have to use everything that I'm using right here. So I've taken my top, top oils in terms of the oils that I believe to be really helpful for this situation of combating viruses and bacteria. And I'm going to walk you through them. We have eucalyptus, sweet orange, cinnamon, really important one, cedarwood, and rosemary. Now, a lot of you say to me, Sophie, what uh, company should we use? What brand? It doesn't really matter as long as they are pure essential oils, that they're not really diluted. So this is a brand called Organic Aromas. I will link to them underneath. You could also try Mountain Rose Herbs is a really good brand as well. They have a really big variety there. So check out both of those. This one I really, really like, and I've started stockpiling them in this little box here. So this is what I'm going to add. I'm going to add five drops of each of these. Now, if you are only using uh, one of them or two of them, because you may not be able to uh, ha get all these to hand, or five, some of them come out, it depends on how thick they are. Then I'm going to explain to you uh, what to do, but I'm putting in five drops of each of these, again, recipe below the video. You definitely want cinnamon in there, cinnamon and clove, but I love cinnamon, is, is highly um, antibacterial and antiviral. I love the smell of the orange, and that does a really good job too, getting to the end of my orange there and my eucalyptus, right? So I'm gonna put in 10 drops of eucalyptus. That one takes a little while to come out too. Okay, 10 drops of eucalyptus. So the math basically would be five, 10, 15, 20 and then 30. So whatever essential oils you're using, put about 30 drops total into this mixture of whichever ones you choose. You could do lavender. Um, these just are my favorite ones. So let's just say you could only get eucalyptus and rosemary. Then you would do 15 drops of each. You see where I'm going? It's just anything to make out the 30 drops. But I really highly recommend that you do try and get cinnamon as one that you're going to use in this blend. And luckily, 
all of these actually, in fact, every single one of these are tend to be the most um, inexpensive essential oils because they're not these tropical flowers like a lang a lang or rose or whatever, where it takes a gazillion rose petal petals to make it. Things like rosemary and cinnamon and orange and whatnot tend to be way less expensive. Okay, so then all we are going to do is you could use a funnel and this amount will make about three of these two ounce bottles. So if you want to make six of them, obviously double the recipe and just keep on doing the math upwards of there. And it might be useful to do that because very often you can buy these bottles in packs of three or six or 12 or whatever. And then let's see, I've got the right thing here. That's, oh no, I haven't to put the wrong one in there. That's the right one. It fits on that. And there you have it. There you have your perfect spray. And let's check it's coming out. There you go. And it smells absolutely lovely. And it does smell quite alcohol-y, just saying. But then you need it to be alcohol-y. And don't shy away from that because alcohol is the primary ingredient that is going to zap those pesky viruses. Now, the other thing is that is great about this spray is you can spritz it on surfaces. So if you're on a plane, um, if you're traveling on a train, you know, if you're in a store or whatever, I love to have the spray. And that was one of the big reasons uh, why I did this one, hot on the heels of the wipes, because the wipes can make surfaces a little bit tacky. Um, so the spray is just wonderful. Also, you can keep it in your car. So when you've come in from the store or the doctor's office or whatever it is, literally you can just get it and just spritz it over the steering wheel, spritz it over your hands again. You cannot be uh, too careful. So there you go. And if you decide to use the smaller bottle, then obviously you're going to be making double the amount of, of little bottles. Um, so totally and utterly up to you. Okay, so that's it. You saw that that was really easy. It also smells so lovely as well. So make if you can get the alcohol, which hopefully you can, make as many bottles as you can and make them for your friends and make them for people who are maybe even more vulnerable than you are. You know, along my travels when I was out and about trying to find some of these ingredients, you know, I saw people in the drugstore and whatever who really were a lot of very elderly people, a lot of infirm people. So we really obviously want to think of just not protecting ourselves, but we also really in the great panic of everything, really want to find ways that we can help and support other people as well who may not be so able-bodied as we are. So that's super duper important. The other thing is that as all the experts are telling you on TV, morning, noon, and night, nothing takes the place of really good hand washing. So yes, you need to wash your hands very well for 20 seconds or more with super hot water, some antibacterial soap if possible. And then you've got your wipes in the other video. Please go and watch that because that's really useful to clean your hands and sanitize them. And the one thing about a sanitizing spray, it's beautiful. You can spray your environment, you can spray around, you can spray in your car, etc. But Spraying a hand sanitizer on top of dirty hands is not going to work. Your hands cannot be dirty. So if they've got grease, grime, mucus from sneezing or coughing on them, you have to wash your hands first and then spray. And the good thing about a spray is that you can really spray all over. You can get underneath your nails with the spray and make sure to really sort of saturate your hands. It's not just a sort of quick spritz here and there. You want to saturate all over the backs of your hands, get underneath your nails, the palms of your hands and up your forearm too. So go make those sprays. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you press that notification bell so I don't get any more emails in my inbox saying, wow, well, never hear about those videos and I'll see you next time.